Hi there, welcome to this little Commissioning 101. We're going to dive into what is the commissioning process. We will look into where the word commissioning originates from and what the commissioning process includes. So it's a basic introduction. So if you already are a commissioning professional, you might not get that much out of this presentation, but it should give you the basics when you're going to talk with other commissioning professionals. So the agenda for this little guide here will be a short introduction. Then we will establish a baseline. So when I say commissioning process, you know what I mean. Then we're going to look into the story about commissioning, filling the gap, then look into some of the standards and guidelines available. And finally, we'll have a look into the process and the activities which is included in the process. So before we start, why do we need commissioning? The requirements for management, control, test, and documentation in construction is on the rise. And this development will persist without end. As you already know, when you are having a project, there's always coming new requirements. There's coming requirements for the consultants, for the contractors, for the owners, and also for the commissioning teams. Those requirements can often be divided into three main areas. The technical complexity, the complexity of our installations is on the rise. Everything needs to be connected to the internet and be, well, a ventilation system that has cooling, heating, BMS, and so on. Then we have the sustainability agenda. There's coming a lot of new requirements for greener installations and using less energy. And then there's the safety requirements. Our buildings need to be safe during the construction phase, but also for our operation and maintenance staff and users in the operations phase. Because these requirements is coming all the time, we need something to handle them and ensure that we still uh, deliver a good quality in the end of the construction project. And that is the commissioning process. Well, why I'm talking here, uh, who am I? It might be the best question. Yeah. I'm Thomas Jalo, and I'm the founder and CEO of CX Planner. I have a long background within the construction industry in the commissioning area. I've been a commissioning specialist for the yeah for many years now. I've been working within the commissioning area for the past 12 years as a consulting engineer, as the commissioning technician, as a freelancer, and also as the owner's representative for the commissioning process. I'm certified QCXP, CXM, and CXA at University of Wisconsin-Madison. Um, besides that, then I'm also the author to the book, A Practical Guide to the Commissioning Process. It's a book on how to perform the commissioning process, but with a practical mindset. So, well, maybe less documents, more doing. And then finally, I'm the founder and CEO here at CX Planner a commissioning software platform. So a platform which helps you to structure, manage and perform the various commissioning activities in a practical way. Good, let's get to it. First, we're going to establish a baseline. Commissioning is a quality management process that verifies documents and tests that a construction project meets the specified requirements. So, commissioning process has something to do with quality, management, and it's a process. What it does is that it takes some requirements and verifies that those requirements are fulfilled at the project. Normally, we can put like four main uh, topics on the commissioning process. As we see here, it's a verification process. So everything we do within the commissioning process has to have some relation to a verification area. The verification can be when you're performing on-site inspections, then it's a visual verification. If you're doing review or scrutinizing of documents, then that's also verification. And then the final verification, which most of us uh, relates to the commissioning process, is the testing. It's when you test that the system also fulfill the requirements. Then the second item here, measurable functional requirements. Every requirement in the commissioning process must be measurable. 
That means it must be strictly and uh, strictly defined so everyone knows when this requirement is fulfilled. Without those requirements, you don't have a commissioning process. Because when you're doing a testing or a verification, you need to do it against something else. And that is the requirements we're talking about here. In the commissioning terms, it's often referred uh, reference to as the owner's project requirements of the OPR. Then the third bullet here, interdisciplinary technical focus. Commissioning is known for, well, filling the gaps between the different uh, disciplines and different works on a construction project. When the commissioning team performs the final commissioning test, they verify that the cooling contractor, the heating contractor, the electrical contractor, and so on, they, the work they have performed works across the disciplines. And that comes back to the technical complexity. All new systems in our construction projects, they must be combined together and work together. So commissioning must verify that everything work as a whole system. The fourth area here is a process. Commissioning is not just one activity. It's a process which starts at the start of the project, goes through the whole project and also into the operations phase. So that means commissioning have, has a, have a lot of good different tools. You can take each of these tools and use them, but a real commissioning process is a process from the start to the end of the project. Then a couple of words on the word commissioning. Um, commissioning in itself has various uh, definitions and can be used in various contexts. So normally when we in the commissioning industry reference to this process, it's the commissioning process. It can further be be described as building commissioning, which is also referenced to in many places. So building commissioning process uh, describes that is within the construction industry and is a process for the commissioning area. The word commissioning originates from, from Latin and well, for the interested parties, you can see how it's become what we know here and, 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 and the journey for it. But we don't, we're going, not going to dive into that for now. Well, so the history of building commissioning process. These are just some, some examples that I found on, on the internet. Uh, if you're interested to see more of the highlights of the commissioning process, uh, then dive into to see Explan's blog. We have one-on-one uh, -on -one pages, one page where we list a lot of other highlights for the commissioning process. Uh, well, as you can see, it goes back uh, some time to when commissioning was started getting used in the US. I was especially focused on the, the 1984. It was when the University of Wisconsin Madison began to offer the commission courses. That's where I'm certified. It is also here when the ASHRAE HVAC Commissioning Guideline Committee was formed. Especially for, for, for my work, I have uh, used the ASHRAE Guideline Zero a lot. And as you can see, it's back in 2005 where the first uh, guideline zero was published, the commissioning process. The guideline zero is still a well-known and well-used document and guideline throughout the commissioning industry. Then in 2018, ASHRAE published the standard, standard 202, the commissioning process for building and systems. So from going from a guideline, this is a standard. And there's a big difference between guidelines, which guides you, and a standard which specifies the requirements. And of course, in 2021, CX Planner, or me, published a practical guide to the commissioning process. That's a book which contains all the information you need to perform commissioning in a practical way. Each section in the book also includes a reference to the standard 202 and the latest guideline zero which describes what are their take on this section. And then I describe in the book how you can yeah, fulfill those requirements, but also how you can yeah, add additional elements to your process and best practices. So regarding the guidelines and standards, 
just a couple of them which are available around uh, the internet. Uh, most of them are, are, are paid guidelines. But of course, the practical guide to the commissioning process. But besides that, then we have in the front here, we have the ASHRAE guideline and the ASHRAE standard. And those two are like the main elements when you talk about commissioning globally. You have a lot of different sub guidelines and standards also for different regions and different states in the US. Um, there's also some different aspects which some of the guideline focuses on. See here in the, uh, in, in the back here, we have the, the NIPS guideline, th guideline three, which is for the building envelope commissioning. Um, well, dive into them and you can find links to them on, uh, on, our, on our commissioning one-on-one page. So this here is the commissioning process. As you can see in the top here, we have some, the, the blue uh, areas here, the blue boxes, those indicate the different phases of a project. These phases here is, well, it can, it can be different than your project and, and projects can have different phases. But for illustrating it, we have the pre-design, that's the initial start of the project. Then we have the design development, construction documents, the construction phase where we're doing the execution, building the, the project. And then finally, we have the occupancy and operations phase where our maintenance come and start. Each of these gray boxes here down below illustrates a commissioning activity. So, and that's why we say it's a commissioning process. It starts from the pre-design and then we have all these gray boxes throughout the project and into the operation phase. So it's a process starting from the start and going into the operations. Just a quick deep dive on, on some of these gray boxes here. So you can see here, the first one, start the commissioning process. After that, we start to define the roles and responsibilities. You're going to, to organize your commissioning team and commissioner organization, who's the commissioning authority and who's the commissioning technicians. This team and organization will change during the project's lifetime because you at all time need to have the relevant parties included in this team. So if there's a lot of focus on the PMS system, you also need to have a BMS specialist in the commissioning team. When the subcontractors or contractors are, are selected on the project, they also need to be part of the team. Then you go to the owner's project requirements. These are our requirements with the measurable, measurable functional requirements, which is our foundation and baseline for everything we do in the commissioning process. Without those requirements, you don't have anything to verify. And without anything to verify, you don't have a commissioning process. After that, the commissioning plan is created. This plan here describes what activities and what commissioning jobs there's going to be performed at the project. So at this state here, the, the plan will be an over, like it will be not the detail for the coming phases because you don't know the exact scope of the project or exact things that's going to, to, to happen. So it will also be detailed throughout the project. Then we're going to do some review of the project material or scrutinizing. And then finally, we do a phase acceptance. So that's only the pre-design phase. And then we go to the design development, startup meeting with the with designers, developing the basis of design. That's the designer's uh, description of how they're going to uh, fulfill the commission requirements, the owner's project requirements in the design documents. So it's like an upfront agreement and an alignment on how this, uh, these owner's project requirements is going to be fulfilled. Then we're going to look into the systems manual. The systems manual is like our final area on how we're going to deliver a handover the documentation. Again, we're going to do a review or scrutinizing of the project material and a phase acceptance. Then for the construction documents, also a startup meeting. If there's new parties involved, they also need to get, get into and know what the commissioning process is about. We're going to develop the test overview. That's our full asset or system view of all the asset systems and installation that we're going to test and verify. Then we're going to develop some site inspection plans. 
those plans will specify when we're going to do our site inspections and what we're going to look at. We're going to establish our first version of the test schedule. We need to ensure that we have, the, we have enough time to perform our commissioning testing. So this schedule needs to be ready now so it can be included uh, for, the, for, the, for the contractor. Then we're going to ensure that the contractor has enough has requirements to participate in the commissioning process. And again, review of the project and a phase acceptance. Then we're coming to the construction phase. As you can see here, we have a long gray box, box in the top of the construction phase. That's the commissioning lock, the test overview, commissioning meetings, progress reports. So activities which are happening and, 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 and done continuously during the execution of construction phase here. Well, I'm not going to dive too much into, the, into all of these, but please note that in the end here, we have our commissioning test. That's our final test of the project. Some lessons learned, phase acceptance, and then we're going over to the handover, uh, to the uh, occupancy and operations phase. This is like, it's like a slim view of the activities attached to the individual phases in the, in the project. Some of the activities will expand across different phases, maybe shorter, maybe longer. That all depends on your specific project. But this should give you like a quick, very basic view of what the commissioning process is. You can uh, dive into some of our other commissioning one-on-one -on -one videos where I go into like a really deep dive of how to perform and how to develop the owner's project requirements what the basis of design needs to include, how to set up and structure the best test overview and best test schedule for your project. And of course, also how you can do the commissioning testing, especially how you can use CX plan for it. If you have any questions regarding this uh, the slideshow here or in commissioning in general, then you're always welcome to reach out to us at the CX plan team. We are, we are very happy to, to have a talk and chat about how commissioning can be used and, 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 and share some of our experience within the commissioning industry. Thank you.